Hey, Rob, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hello, Rob. Uh, thank you for having me. We are super glad to have you here because, man, we, we love talking about money management. We yep. love talking about relationships, but we also love to talk about wealth building and wealth building strategies. And you're here because you have an expertise in a particular form of real estate investment that and not a lot of people, people know don't about. know about, man. Yeah. So that's why they listen to the His and Her Money Show because we right. bring all the good, good that people are not generally talking about. But before we dive into your expertise, can you just introduce yourself to everyone that's tuned in right now and let them know what you are all about? Sure. So my name is Robert Rose, Rob Rose. I'm the executive director of the Cook County Land Bank Authority. The Cook County Land Bank Authority is a county agency here in Cook County, uh, of which Chicago is the county seat. Um, we are located here in Chicago, and what we do is we acquire distressed real estate, so vacant, abandoned, and foreclosed properties. We acquire those properties. We clear out all of the red tape against those properties, so back taxes, old water bills, mechanics liens, old mortgages, and then we make those properties available to investors, to homeowners, to nonprofit organizations at below market prices. And so um, we are a county agency designed to remove blight, to stabilize neighborhoods, and to create wealth within the community. Now, you have a strong history even past the, the Cook County Land Bank where you have been involved in real estate, real estate development, finance, community development for a very long time. Why is, I mean, because I think when we think real estate investing, we think about our bottom line, our net worth, uh, ways that we can become wealthy for you know ourselves, our children, our children's yeah. children. But sure. what is the community impact when somebody um, does it the right way, invests in real estate the right way? Yeah, I think there are a couple of things to consider when you think about community building and community wealth building, right? One, um, as the community participates, the wealth of the community goes up. And what do I mean by that? If I come in from the outside, if I'm an outside person coming in to invest in the community, I'm going to do what I need to do and what my money dictates I should do in the, in the goods and services being offered to the community. So what I come in and bring may not necessarily be what the community wants to see, um, and I may do it in a way that the community is not happy with, right? And so we see this all the time with pawn shops and liquor stores that are coming in that are often offered by people not in the community, but this is a service they want to offer. This is what they want to do. And it's just sort of imposed on the community. So when we see community-based uh, based wealth building, we see the shops that people want to see, the goods and services that they want to support. And then even when the big boxes come in, uh, they're going to cater their offerings to the people in the community. That's the first part. So the, 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 the quality of services and what's being offered is catered to the community. But the second thing and more important thing is that we have the dollar that stays in the community, that, it goes from one person to the next person. And that dollar is able to recycle before it goes back out of that community. Um, and it's important that that happens because every time that dollar touches a person, that enhances the lives and enhances the experiences of that community. And so rather than the money leak out, right, um, and that's what we're seeing in a lot of underserved communities here in Chicago, um, in order to go to the grocery store, in order to um, you know, get any major service done, you must drive out, you must leave out, that money leaks out. Um, that has an effect, it, it, it has an effect um, in that it drives down property values and that people um, are less willing to pay for the money and the houses are less valuable if they have to constantly leave the community, right? It's not as convenient. Um, but we're also seeing that um, psychologically it has an effect that anything that's good and anything that is worth and valuable is not in your community that you have to leave out. Um, I think that has a, an effect on people in the long term. Uh, when you say my community doesn't seem worthy of, of investment, doesn't seem worthy that it should have the same goods and services. So I mean, all of those things are the reasons why we've got to have the community involved um, in the wealth building uh, effort. I think it strengthens the community. And if you think about communities that are strong, um, they have that element to it. The, the community is involved in a real way in that effort. Now, you are the executive director of the Cook County Land Bank, and some people are hearing the term land bank, and maybe like certain imagery is coming to their mind, like a regular bank, I go in there and I just, do I buy land? Like I do a withdrawal and I come out right. with land? Because even for us, you know, being well-versed in, in, in finance and investment and things like that, 
the the land bank terminology and your program was something that we weren't familiar with until very recently. So we know that this is something that people may have not heard about. So if that's the case, what is a land bank? And, and I think that's, that it's important to note also too, we're seeing Cook County, mm -hmm. but more than likely, they're, all, they're, over the they're country. all over the country. Absolutely. So there are about 150 land banks across the country. Um, and so um, the, um, the think tank in the Trade Association for Land Banks is a group called the Center for Community Progress. So if you Google Center for Community Progress, they actually have an interactive map that will show you the location of all the land banks in the country. So there are about 150 of, uh, 150 of us around the country. But what a land bank is, as you said, the land bank is not a bank in the sense that we take deposits and that we make loans. Bank in the sense of holding, I can bank or hold properties. Um, the official name of groups around the country can be something like the, the Land Reutilization Authority or the Land Redevelopment Authority. Uh, we went with Land Bank, um, but that's what we're known as. Um, it's a catchy title, but what it really means is that we have the ability to acquire and to hold properties such that we are able to be patient so that redevelopment efforts are able to occur without the time pressure that typically comes in a development process. So the bank part is, uh, it refers to our ability to hold properties. Up. So we don't make loans, we don't have that function, we're not able to deposit into the bank. Um, it's really about our ability to hold properties. So um, someone may be hearing this for the first time and they may actually locate uh, their particular land bank. What's the process like? So take us from step one, to however many steps there are for somebody that's just now coming to learn a little bit more about the land bank and what's the process that they can take in order to inquire about land. Sure. So the land bank is, is hyper local, meaning that every land bank operates um, specifically to their market. So the land bank in Chicago takes on a different function than the land bank in Atlanta, although we have the same mission the way it's done and the laws that govern what we can do are different from state to state. So I can talk about how you engage with us uh, specifically in, in the Cook County Land Bank and then generally how you would reach out. But just keep in mind that some of the things that I talk about may not occur in, um, in, in Ohio or Michigan because they have different laws that govern how these land banks operate. For us, we use technology. It's, it starts with our website. Um, part of what we want to do is make these properties available to everyone. So typically in a development situation, when you have land and you're coming across distressed real estate, what we saw are lists, right? Uh, you could go to uh, any bank and they say, here's our list of foreclosed properties. Now here's our list of, 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 of distressed properties. And that list went out to a very select group of people. And so they were the ones that were privy to what was on the list and they were the, the preferred customers, if you will. Uh, we want to do away with lists in that regard. So what we've done is that all the information is on our website. All the property that's available is on our website. All the property that's in our pipeline is on our website so that it's open to as many people as possible to come to the website, select a property, uh, indicate their interest, and we call it putting an application on the property. It doesn't cost you anything. It's really your name, email address, contact information, what you intend to do with the property and it goes from there um, if we have it in inventory you're able to then actually inspect the property we don't sell anything sight unseen and we don't sell to outside of illinois investors for the cook county land bank uh, again that's something that may be different for other land banks but for us it's important that we have local ownership of these assets so you're able to inspect and then you put in an offer right uh, we have a suggested price uh, there's some negotiation to that price, but the price is pretty good. And this, we divide at that price, taking into account the, the rehab needed, um, the after rehab value, uh, and the amount of work that has to go into it. And we price it such that there's equity to be built into the pricing for the investor or for the homeowner. And that's important because it's the equity that allows for the wealth building. And that was going to be my next question. I heard you say um, investor or homeowner. Um, can someone purchase these properties if they plan on living in, in them or do they have to be an investor? No, we have a program called the Home Buyer Direct Program. 
So these are houses that we have specifically set aside for owner occupants. So, so for people who want to buy the house and either put their sweat equity to rehab it or to acquire a purchase rehab loan, such as a 203k loan, to purchase and rehab it. Um, uh, the only requirement is that they have to live in it. It has to be their primary residence. And we have those homes pulled aside in a home buyer direct program. Um, you may not be aware, or we're getting the word out, um, in promotion of a home buying direct program, we actually are giving away a free house. Um, and so right now, people are able to go to our website to enter for that free house. Uh, and it's the same thing. It's going to be your primary residence, 21 years or, or older to enter. You must be able to move into the house within 90 days of the award. Um, and you must live in the house for five years. Um, at the end of that five-year period, then the house is yours free and clear, uh, and you're able to sell it, rent it, do whatever you want to do with it. But the whole idea is that uh, for the family that is blessed with this house, they're able to build tremendous wealth because that equity will accrue to them, uh, and they're able to use it as a foundation or other activities that they want to do further down the line. Um, part of it is to say, we believe in wealth building. We believe in equity creation. We want to do what we can to encourage that. But a home buying direct program is how we do that. Right now, we have sold over 140 houses through that channel. And the um, average home buyer has $20,000 worth of equity working through our program. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. If people want to find out more about this house giveaway, what is the website for them to check out? It is cookcountylandbank.org. CookCountyLandBank.org, CookCountyLandBank.org, all spelled out. Um, or if they Google Cook County Land Bank Authority, we're the first entry that pops up. Now, do they have to be an Illinois resident or can they live outside of Illinois planning to move to Illinois? They can be outside of Illinois planning to move in. So we have entries from Wisconsin and Indiana as well. Um, you must have the ability to live in the house within 90 days of the award. So if you're looking to relocate to Chicago, you're also an eligible person to, to win the award, or to win the house. And how long is this contest going? Uh, entries are open now. We opened it um, at the start of the Bud Billigan Day Parade, August 10th, and it's open through September 15th, which is right after the Chicago Football Classic. Awesome. We'll be sure to have that linked in the show notes of this episode. Now, you mentioned, you know, we're talking about a home giveaway is when we go to a land bank's website and we start to look at what's available, are we just going to see single family homes or are there different types of structures that are available? There's different types of structures that are available. When we started the land bank, we focused on single family homes because there was so many of them uh, in the area from the foreclosure crisis. But now we have expanded. So there are commercial properties as well as industrial properties included. Um, on our website, it's all color coded and we use standard planning colors. So green is vacant land, orange is houses, red is commercial properties, purple are industrial properties. You'll see that color coded throughout the, the website. Um, you come to a map, you can zoom in and out. It's a Google uh, map that we have our properties overlaid on that map. Um, and as you click eat, uh, the dots, it explodes and gives you the information, the address, the permanent index number, um, a description of the property, pictures if we have pictures of the, of the property and a tab there to apply for that property. That's all on the website. Now uh, on the investor side, we know that, you know, there, there's competition for these homes. You all have yes. a fantastic resource in that the homes that you all are, are posting, they need work, but they're also priced very reasonably that leaves room even after, you know, a rehab budget, there's still okay. equity there. Like you mentioned earlier, so since there is that competition, what advice do you have for investors to like, you, because you mentioned the fact that there's an application for each home. You don't just say, Hey, I want that one and show up at your office and sign some paperwork. You have to apply to be able to get that home from the land bank. So how do we strengthen our position as investors? And what are you all looking for when you all make a decision as who gets what home? That's a great question. Um, so because there's often multiple applications on each of the houses. When you submit your offer, we're looking for three basic components. Um, remember, everyone has had a chance to walk through the property. They've had a chance to assess the property. So we're looking for a scope of work. 
we're looking to understand what it is that you want to do with this house or with this business. Uh, we also want to see a budget that accompanies that scope of work. So here's what I intend to do. And here is how much I think it's going to cost me to do it. And the third thing we want to see is a plan. Um, if it's a commercial property, we want to understand the business plan. If it's a single family and you're going to sell it to a homeowner, what's your marketing plan? If it's going to be your primary residence, what do you plan to do with it in terms of your rehab? <coughs> Excuse me. We want to know and understand that plan um, because right now this is not an auction. So if we have a house listed for $30,000. We're going to sell it for 30. We're not going to sell it to the highest bidder. So your offer isn't 50, 60, 70 and then sold, right? Your mm -hmm. offer is we want to sell to the person that we think is best going to best rehab that house you know, at that price point. And so we want to know and understand, you know, what's in detail what you intend to do. The other thing about these properties is that we've already inspected them. For every house, we actually have a certified house inspector go through the house. So we have a report. Part of what we're doing when we look at the scopes of work, we want to make sure that you have contemplated um, everything that needs to be addressed in that house. If we know that there's an issue with the HVAC and you're not going to address it in your scope of work, then you may not get that house because you're not going to have the adequate resources to do that and or be looking at that. Or worse, be surprised that when you go to rehab the house, this is something you hadn't contemplated and you may not have the resources to address it. So we're looking at what you give us versus what we already know to be issues in the house to see how well you match up with what we know to be, uh, be the case. Um, the other thing that we do is we do reference checks. Part of the application is you're gonna submit references to us. We wanna know and understand what work you have done and even if it's your first rehab as a business, but you've done it as a, as a handyman or you've done it um, as, a, um, uh, as a tradesman, we still want to see and understand the quality of the work that you've done. So it's an art, not a science. Uh, it's not a hard checklist that we go through. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we, at one hand, are, have, are able to have new people join the fold and work with us. Then on the other hand, we want to make sure that people are being responsible and they'll get in over their heads because distressed real estate, it's a risky proposition, especially if you don't know what you're doing or if you're not adequately prepared to take on the challenges. I, I like this for several reasons. One, when you all do your inspection, you don't make it public. It's for your, like you said, it's for you all to then, as you all get these applications in to see is this potential investor you know, addressing the, the needs that we have already identified because that, that will cut out people who are trying to cut corners and things like that or cut out people who don't really have the means to end up starting it but can't finish and thus putting that community, that neighborhood in a worse situation. I love that. And then um, I was curious as you ended right there, if someone is listening and they've just been doing a bunch of research on investing in real estate, but this is going to be their first project. Do you think they should not try the land bank, bank route until they've done a project previously or a first time investor who has, you know, all the other boxes checked other than the fact that this will be their first project? Should they still look at land banks as a resource to find, you know, a property to invest in? No, we've got a big shingle out. We want you, if you're a first time person, we want you to come work with us with the caveat bring somebody with you that has the experience, right? So we've seen people that have done plenty of rehabs in the suburbs but never have done rehabs within the city of Chicago. It's a different animal. The permitting process is different. So you need to have someone with you that knows and understands that. So that's what we're looking for. So if this is your first rehab in terms of the city of Chicago or your first rehab in terms of being a developer or coming at it, where you're bringing the money and the resources as opposed to just being an electrician or carpenter, then you need to have someone with you that you're working with and we're gonna check for that, that has had that experience. Um, because if you've never um, had to pull a permit in Chicago, um, then you are going to spend a lot of time learning that on the job. You need somebody there that has done that before that can help you. Um, so that's what we're looking for. So, and we've had a lot of successful first time rehabbers that, that have done that, but what they've done is they've always partnered with someone with the experience. So uh, there was a young lady that did our 200th home 
um, but she partnered up with a very experienced developer. So she had the vision, she had the resources, she had the finance and get it done, but he actually had the know-how and the expertise and could help her realize her vision. That was a perfect pairing of the two. And for her being the first time person, she was able to come in and to really uh, use that um, uh, resource to be, be able to do a beautiful rehab on that house. So you are two, 200 completed houses in, but you know, you probably have over a thousand or 2000 applications that you've seen. What are some things that people have done incorrectly that our audience should be wary of? Well, so slight correction, we celebrated the 200th house back in November of, of 2017. We are on the cusp on the verge of celebrating our 500th rehab. Wow. So we'll be celebrating that um, um, most likely in October or November. Right now we are at about 150, uh, 450 houses approaching 500. So that's the first thing. What we've seen done incorrectly. Um, we've seen typically, no matter what your budget is, you're gonna go over it. Um, right now with the tariffs that are, uh, that are in place, the cost of materials has gone up. With the amount of activity that's taking place around town, both with the downtown development and the neighborhood development, we're seeing that good contractors are going to cost you more, um, and contract track tractors are less scarce. Uh, I'll, I'll just say more scarce, right? It's harder to find good ones, and it's harder to keep the good ones. So um, you're going to see some delays on that. Jobs are getting done, but it's going to take you a little longer to get them done, and it's going to cost you a little more because now they're starting to ratchet up their prices. Um, uh, in addition to that, though, we've seen people, you can't rehab a house uh, that you're doing for um, uh, for a, a property for investment purposes like you would your own house. We want you to have the quality that you will want to see in your house, but you can't be so specific around the taste and the color palette and the choice of materials that you would your own house. And that's one big mistake that first timers make. They rehab it like they're going to live in it in a, in, a, in a real sense. So it's, I want this accent wall. I want this color. I want this carpet. I want this wood. Um, and it has a very specific taste. I mean, it's very difficult to market to a wide audience. We have something that is very specific. So that's one um, uh, mistake that you know, newbies make. The other thing is that um, they want to focus on finishes and don't want to address the key fundamental things that have to be done. Um, and that's where one that we have inspections that we're doing along the way to make sure those things are being done. But two, that's where having an experienced person with you, you know, helps because it's not sexy to do, to get a new HVAC and a new water heater and to do a new roof. And that can cost a lot of the budget that you have, but you can make it as beautiful as you want. But if a person moves in and that roof starts leaking, right? Or the heat goes out. Um, it doesn't matter how pretty it is, there's going to be a problem with that house. And what we're trying to do is get fundamentally sound houses that also look good. Um, and so those are the things that people want to typically cut corners. Then the final piece is that people underestimate the power of landscaping. And so the house can be beautiful. And they've tuck pointed the house and they've dressed the roof and they've done all the things on the inside. Um, and then they don't, uh, they don't landscape it. They don't add new grass. They don't remove the weeds. They don't uh, trim up the hedges and the house has no curb appeal. And you can increase the resale value of a house simply by investing uh, pretty economically into landscaping, into flowers and mulch, um, weed removal, uh, edging it up and being able to make it work that way. Sorry about that. Um, so those are, those, those are probably the three biggest mistakes that we've seen, you know, people make. Um, and what we try and do on the big, big mistakes is we try and make sure that we're there to give guidance um, mm -hmm. there throughout the process so that um, even as they make their way through the process, that we still have a very high quality rehab. Do you find um, from just past experience and things like that, that you do have some investors that prefer just to work with the land bank? Um, they prefer to find their properties that way. They prefer to just go that route opposed to doing it themselves outside of the land bank. You know, we certainly have groups that uh, would like to work with us as much as they can. You know, part of the limiting factor has been that, you know, we're still in the process of growing our inventory. Um, and so uh, we've been a part of uh, people's strategies, but we haven't been the only part. 
Uh, but that's you know, as we start to grow our inventory, they can rely more and more on us. But the people that work with us appreciate the um, they they appreciate that they we are known uh, quantity in terms of dealing with. Um, what we say is what we're going to do. Our contracts are pretty uh, straightforward. We secure all of our houses and we care for them while we have them in inventory. So if you came in our house and you saw copper when you were doing your inspection, there'll be copper when you get into the house because we're securing the houses. We have property preservation companies that are monitoring those houses. We rentalize all of our houses. Um, no, we take care to make sure that we preserve the, the, the value of the collateral once it's in our possession. And so knowing that and having that comfort level is great uh, because now um, it cuts out some of the unknowns that comes with you know, buying distressed property. You mentioned earlier about the fact that there will be competition for each home and we have to apply. So if we do apply, what's a typical turnaround time where we were here that, you know, we got it or we didn't get it? Sure. Um, so when you apply for the property, uh, there's a timeline that's given in the email. It will give you a time by which you have to complete your inspection. Uh, it'll give you the deadline by which you uh, put in your offer application. And then we'll give um, a, a deadline or a time by which we'll make a decision. And that typically is a 30 day turnaround from the time that you uh, initiate the process. Uh, and so, uh, but whatever the time frame is, it'll be outlined in that email so that you'll have that. Now, what's interesting is that I've had people call me and say, Rob, I applied for this property. I hadn't heard nothing. And I said, did you get an email from us? They go, yeah, the email only gave me the deadline and they read through and they see, oh, okay, I didn't read all the way through to see the deadline for the application, the deadline for a decision. So it's all embedded in there. So we try and do that to give some set expectations so that you know we're clear and on the same page about what we can do. That's not set in stone. And if it changes, we'll notify you. But we do try and, and set that expectations. And what we aim for is about a 30 day turnaround from the time that you inspect it to the time we make a decision. From the time it goes under contract, if you're selected, we give you 60 days to close. Another thought that came to mind would be, since again, we are gonna be in competition with others, good idea, or bad idea to apply for multiple homes. Good idea. Because um, what happens is, if you win one or two homes, then we're gonna cancel out your contracts for the other ones, because we wanna make sure that you don't, we don't overrun your capacity especially if you're new to us. Um, I'd rather sell you two now and do two later than four at one time, you see what I mean? So, um, so it doesn't, you're not penalized, if you will, for, buying, for applying for multiple houses because you can always turn it down. If, we, if you apply for six houses and four, house four is one of the houses that you were just okay on, but you've also been awarded two other houses, it's okay to decline and say, okay, I'm only gonna do these two because this is, these are the two that I really wanted to do. Um, uh, so you, you, know, you have that option. But most times, you know, we're trying to balance it out. So we're aware that you've, a most, that you've applied for multiple houses. In some cases, we may uh, contact you and say, hey, you've put in for six houses, right? Uh, here are the three that you're in strong consideration for. What, what, what's your top two? So we can take that into consideration to make sure that everyone that applied is able to get what they need. So we want to be a partner here with you and work with you. Um, but I absolutely encourage you to apply for multiple houses that increases the chances of getting one or two of the houses. Um, and again, you know, uh, unfortunately, there's more inventory coming where that came from. So if, you, if you're not able to get that one house, um, there'll be another house around it that's going to meet your needs and, and help you with what you're trying to do in terms of your wealth building. This has been super informative. I think uh, you opened up a lot of eyes yep. and you brought, provided uh, some valuable insight to a, a great resource around the country for opportunities, not only for investing in real estate, but finding mm -hmm. uh, a primary residence that you can get into with some equity built in. So we truly yes. appreciate you making some time out of your busy schedule to share it with us and our audience today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, thank you for allowing me to do my first uh, video uh, interview. Uh, so that's the first, and I'm glad, you know, we really are trying to make sure we get the word out to everyone. I know what I hear around town is, hey, what is the land banking? And I hadn't heard about you all before, uh, and that's fine, but that's part of it. So thank you for helping me to get the word out to people. We really do believe this is a valuable resource for folks to 
to use in their wealth building efforts.